published a series translating accounts of the mass killings of 1965-66, including three books, Truth Will Out, edited by Oscar Wadaya, Breaking the Silence, edited by Putu Okasukanta, and the third book in the series, Forbidden Memories, which we're launching this evening, which has been put together by the team JPIT from Kupa. I'll leave it to others to speak about the book, but I would just uh, want to say that I think it's important that this, um, to note that this launch was indeed due to take place not here in Melbourne, but in Bali at the end of October at the Ubud Writers and Readers Festival. And again, as many of you are no doubt aware, this launch, together with the exhibition of photos from Ajar, we're going to screen some of them in video for you, um, together with that exhibition um, and a series of panels that had been put together by Kate McGregor and myself um, on behalf of the Herb V Foundation, were withdrawn from the festival under pressure from the local police. The panels were about bringing together people to talk about and explore 1965 as a subject of historical research and writing, both non-fiction and fiction, and also about the creative ways in which processes of healing are playing out for victims and their supporters 50 years on. There's no time this evening to really speak further about the cancellations, and Kate and I have done that um, a few times now, except to say that the foundation was immediately spurred on to create more opportunities to talk about 1965, and albeit sadly on this occasion, it's occurring outside Indonesia, but we aim to support more initiatives and activities on 65 into the future, including in Indonesia itself. So now it is my pleasure to invite Kate McGregor to introduce the photo exhibition curated by the Asian Justice and Rights Group, The Act of Living. Um, apologies again, we had intended to exhibit the actual photographs and the actual exhibit for you this evening, but we've had some delays in receiving those shipments. So we will do that on another occasion, but instead we have a sample here um, to give you a feel for the exhibition, which Kate will now introduce. Thanks, Kate. Thank you, Gemma, great. So um, first of all, I just want to introduce the organisation that is behind the photo exhibition, and that is Aja. Gemma mentioned, and that's Asia Justice and Rights. It's a non-profit human rights organisation based in Jakarta, established in 2009. And ANJAR works generally to increase capacity of local and national actors, including victims, organisations, in the fight particularly against entrenched impunity, and to contribute also to building cultures based on accountability, justice, and willingness to learn the root causes of mass violence in the Asia Pacific region. And in putting together this photo exhibition, which is part of a large participatory-based research project, they've worked with many partner organisations across Indonesia. The project also covers actually East Timor, West Papua and Myanmar. But the photos tonight are specifically to do with women victims of 1965, women survivors, I should say. And in putting together this project, they've worked with many partners, including JIBIT, which we have a representative from tonight, Ibudina, and so they're partners also in this research project. And to say a little bit more about the photo exhibition, um, this exhibition was a result of that much larger research project, which involved female survivors of the 1965 crimes against humanity. So there was a total of 26 women and children of political prisoners of 1965 who participated in the project. And during that process, many women shared their stories of the violence and discrimination. And when I mention the word participatory-based research, I think one of the innovative things about this project is that it does involve women who are survivors of the violence as creators also of the research output. So in this exhibition, you'll see photographs of them, but also um, Gemma is narrating the captions, which actually tell from their point of view their experiences of not only the violence, but also ongoing impunity in Indonesia. Another part of this larger research project was also a book called Enduring Impunity, which has also recently been launched. It was successfully launched, actually. 
um, and I think it's already available. And that's a fantastic book that outlines a lot more about this large project on women survivors of violence and how they have endured um, the process of ongoing impunity. So we'll make a start. Thanks. and Dina Dehan from Partner. Um, Dina is representing the authors of the Forbidden Memories um, this evening. But before I come up, I want to introduce them one at a time um, and give you some bios, uh, which are very much worth listening to because we have some extraordinary women in the room and who will be speaking to us. Firstly, Saskia is an honorary professor at the University of Amsterdam, holding the chair of women's same sex relations She's also the co founder and current secretary of the Katini Asia Network. Since the late 1970s, Saskia has conducted research on women's movements, sexual politics, and same sex relations in many parts of the world, particularly in Indonesia. She has helped set up women's studies programs in the Caribbean, in Namibia, the Sudan, and Bangladesh. Saskia has written and edited more than 30 books and over 200 articles. Including, I think you'll agree, seminal sexual politics in Indonesia. And her more recent books include the latest books, including Women's Sexuality, Domestic Relations, and Worldwide in Asia, and Riku Shabani, The Future of Asian Feminism. And I could go on. Her novel, Yuban Buaya, uh, has just been published in English as The Crocodile Hole, is available for sale um, over on the book table if you're interested. And it was launched in Ubud. Not at the Writers' Festival, but outside the Writers' Festival, um, and she might speak to us about that. Saskia has received various awards for her scholarly work, including a 2011 award for Best Paper from the Journal of Research in Asia. Her recent research project focuses on women's same sex relations in historical perspective in Indonesia and on the post 1965 in East Java. She is chair of the Foundation. IPT 1965, which organised the International People's Tribunal on the Indonesian Post-1965 Crimes Against Humanity. And it is in that uh, role that she will be speaking to us this evening, together with Pushabani. Pushabani Kajisangana was a commissioner of the National Commission on Violence Against Women, 1998-2003. She's the co-founder of APIC, Association for Everyone in the Media, and Silka Abilan. Indonesian Women's Association for Justice, which is an organisation that gives direct legal aid to women who are victims of violence and discrimination, as well as providing legal advocacy, training, and to conduct the research. Currently, Mushabani is the National Coordinator of Indonesian Legal Aid Society for Women's Generation, which has 15 branches from Aceh to Papua. She was the first Secretary General of the Indonesian Women's Coalition for Justice and Democracy, 1998-2003, which was the first women's black organization of the post reformati period. Nur was a member of the People's Consultative Assembly from 1999 to 2004, and a member of Parliament, 2004 to 2009, and is currently on the board of the National Awakening Party. She too has published books, many books, on legal issues and violence against women, including the Colleges Volume of Saskia in 2012. Nur has been awarded numerous prizes and honours. In 2008, Globe Asia magazine listed her as the 51st most powerful woman in Indonesia out of, out of a total of 99. She speaks to us also tonight in her capacity as the general co coordinator of the International People's Festival of 1965. And then our third speaker is Dina Tetan Pada, who has come all the way from Kupang and arrived only this morning. So <laughs> she's, she's had a busy two days. Dina is here and we're so pleased she is to represent the team of researchers, writers, and editors from the Women's Network of East Indonesia or Jaringan Sperkalan Indonesia Timur which is responsible for this wonderful volume of forbidden memories that we're launching. Dina is a pastor in the Timor Evangelical Christian Church and has served as a member of the GMIT Synod 
in various roles over the past 14 years. As well as ministering to her congregation in Zaliba, Tina carries out her work with the Women's Network of East Indonesia. I welcome you all and please come up for the launching of the Big Memory. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much, Jenna, um, for your kind uh, introduction. Um, as, uh, as, uh, as Kate already said, and as Jenna also already said, this is actually a delayed uh, launch because um, the, this book also was supposed to be launched in uh, two months, uh, late October, um, but it was prohibited. And we went on with the drop panel, as you said. Um, but we were, of course, we could not do it within the festival itself. So instead of a book launch, which they do, we had a book lunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we all came together at a restaurant of a friendly owner, of course, who uh, was fully supported our plan uh, to have lunch, right? Uh, as nobody can prevent people sitting down and having lunch. Um, <laughs> Uh, and people sometimes do discuss things while they're lunching. Uh, now people sometimes may even discuss one particular thing as a book while they're lunching. Now we could do it anything but but three times Intel came and police came and tried to chase us away. And when they were there, the first time we were just sitting out and lunching. But at last uh, they were just there watching us while we were also talking and discussing the book. It was not very funny actually. But we, because uh, it's a bit intimidating, all these kinds of things. But uh, we thought we wanted to make a, a statement. So, yeah, here it is. Jen yeah. just brought it. So, I, I, thought, I brought a few copies for if you're interested. But we are very happy to introduce uh, this book here, Forbidden Memories, which is absolutely, uh, I would say, a fantastic uh, book. We have divided up our task as follows. Noor will introduce uh, the general importance of the book, um, and I will then uh, just mention some striking case studies. I will just introduce a few, because there's so many, so 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 rich in detail. Uh, and then I suppose uh, if you come in and you say something about your group work and, 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 and what you did in your role in the book, right? So it goes to Noor. Thank you, uh, Saskia. First of all, uh, I would like to thank the uh, Foundation for giving uh, me an opportunity to be here. And uh, of course, I have known them to launch Mary Cosimon, Lillian, Metan, Vera, Karen Carol Nelson uh, book that has been translated to uh, English. Um, from memory, 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 memory to forbidden uh, uh, memories. Then <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought I met uh, Jack for a long time ago. And um, then uh, I started uh, on the Arctic. Uh, when Jennifer was uh, in his uh, organization. Yeah, um, this is, uh, I thought, uh, the first book on, on the 1965 violence outside of Java and Bali, dealing with uh, Antete and Musa Tegara, the Timur, Kupang. South Center of the Timor, Awar, and uh, Isumba. Um, also, uh, this is uh, the first book to detail the role of uh, the church, uh, both uh, Catholic and uh, Protestant. Uh, it is a very impressive uh, book, well researched, providing overwhelming information of the state violence. The crimes against humanity committed in Indonesia, or of uh, the article of uh, This book uh, also, uh, once more, 
uh, demonstrating that uh, these violence and uh, crimes against humanity were widespread and uh, systematic. In the International Recourse Tribunal on Crimes Against uh, Humanity, we uh, collaborated uh, with this team. They wrote their chapter on uh, Nusa Tenggara uh, Timur. Yeah, maybe later we uh, will uh, explain to you how uh, the, uh, there are many researchers contribute to uh, IDP. I think there are more than 40 researchers. And uh, Saskia contributed to the uh, research uh, team. And uh, we also had two witnesses providing evidence. Uh, once uh, on them, uh, Ibu uh, Ben, yeah, um, they uh, testified behind the screen because it was too, uh, too dangerous uh, for them. Um, yeah, it was uh, up to now, it is uh, too dangerous to openly uh, speak up about journalists. Uh, therefore, thanks uh, to those who did speak up for this book. As before, God stated, the church and the nation are in a bed. Because only through this kind of uh, testimonies can a process of truth attending of uh, confession start, which will lead to an apology, reparation, and the restoration of the rights of the victims. Who were murdered, imprisoned, violated with any due legal process. This is also the wonderful example of a collaboration with the uh, university and uh, the activities network. The university being uh, the Arka Vachana Christian University, Uka uh, Awe. Study group of women in the religion and culture in Bhutan, supported by the Jaringan Perduan Indonesia Board of the GPIP from the day. The foreword of uh, this group, uh, Reverend uh, Dr. Andreas R. Ivanko, head of the Communion of Churches, Churches in Indonesia. Only through a confession of sins is true forgiveness possible. It's a remarkable. He noted that Pastor Van Ostrom accompanied the prisoner to the site of uh, execution and prayed with them. We had a similar uh, story in this case in relation to the Muslim religion in Plumbon, a master with me and Smara. This undermined uh, the propaganda that PKI members were ateists. El Gasarakum, director of Interfidate, raises similar issues. She points to a stream in Catholicism, liberation theology, in which the Christian, the Christian faith and the struggle for social justice are combined. She admonished the church to not be afraid of authorities who falsify the truth, but we need to actively search for truth and justice. Sadly, those voices are heard too seldom in relation to the so called 1965 event in We remember how quickly it was told that to reflect. When he brought up this issue in 2001. Yet, this is the way forward for Indonesia. Face the past, stop the impunity, and comfort the lies about the massacres, imprisonment, torture, and violence, and learn from them in order to help develop a future without such violation of human rights. In this book, Mary Collymon calls upon the church to acknowledge its role in the crimes against humanity committed in Indonesia after October 1965, 
because if the church otherwise, the church cannot realize its potential in the fight for justice in Indonesia. One of the most important findings in this book is how the crimes against humanity committed not only directly affected the victim and their families, but also destroyed local custom and religion and kinship relations. People who adhered adhere to the traditional Agama suku were associated with PKI and many politically converted to one of the official religion. Later, in 1978, even an official religion was forbidden. So, when Kodimon concludes, the church must first of all listen. Then acknowledge its last silence and complicity in the acts of violence committed against the people, and thirdly, strive for the restoration and reparation of the rights of the victim and survivor who are faced with enduring stigma and discrimination. Yeah, as you uh, can see in the, uh, the act of slavery, uh, most of the victims are very uh, poor. This is a lesson that the nation state itself should take to heal. To harm. Okay. Yeah, I'll just continue and give uh, two very, very, very short examples of tolerance and fail that is in this book. Uh, Rudolf already explained the enormous importance uh, of, uh, of, this, of this impressive volume of research. Those are an enormous group of researchers at work who, uh, who really had this long, long process of getting to know the victims, speaking to them, uh, taking their oral testimonies, working with them, helping them. I mean, it's not, it's not the kind of expected research project, the research is coming in, rushing out, and writing a thesis. This is a really kind of collaborative research project, which is, I think, the only basis for this kind of, of work. So I'll just make two case studies because the book is so rich. Uh, I, I of course want to do justice to it. So please read it. Um, what was very important also is to find that uh, not only in Java, but I know much more about it. Uh, what happened in '65 is also the total destruction of the upcoming progressive intellectual alien in Indonesia. Uh, in this book, this is exemplified the murder of 24 teachers in Istanbul, all associated with, and they didn't have to be members of the PKI, but they were associated with the PKI, which of course the PKI at that time, PKI, was the most modern party in Indonesia, right? As uh, also many other people have said. Uh, the PKI was also popular because uh, at that moment uh, there was a draft in the Indonesian uh, cabinet, and the PKI was the one who was really managing to get help to the victims uh, and to get supplies in the face of this protracted crime. Uh, they set up cooperatives and these the names, the members of these cooperatives later came to the hands of the military and they began blacklist. Uh, even if you just received aid, you were already associated with, etc. etc. Uh, many of the women teachers, in Islam particularly, were also associated with Germany. Again, they didn't have to members, but they were already uh, like, uh, associated with the money to them also. Also, because Samu had a very clear tradition, and most of that now uh, uh, is lost, right? The women traditionally played leadership roles, so the money was the, was the best suitable organization for them to uh, conduct the work. And when the army arrived in November, December, and they spread out across the Gaza, uh, across all regions actually. Uh, immediately, a civilian militia was formed and mass arrests were made. Many were executed in this research project. In this research project, the execution of 24 men is, is detailed. Uh, there are gruesome stories. Uh, for instance, Mugai was detained and badly beaten. She was a minor part of the research. Let me say it to be strong as she said, and fine as <laughs> uh, uh, She says, on the night before he was to be executed, I left my husband and go to prison at the prison gates. We knelt and prayed together and sang 
the head of Sir Hedda. So this is such a touching scene. You have to imagine that these people are being uh, accused of being atheists. That place was dead. Uh, later, when she is released, she is seen as fresh by society, as shunned also by the church. This is what makes it that also the feeling as the honest. These are people from the church who are acknowledging as funds. Uh, and they form their own quiet, even though she says you were the targets of insults. So that that faith remains strong. <coughs> so the Quranic members of women associated with Islam were the saints in Sabu, but ultimately they were scattered to the ashes because they were ultimately described as Christians, but they were beaten in Islam and many of them also experienced sexual violence. But because they were uh, saved, because they were considered to have been merely following their husbands, so all of a sudden uh, women are uh, <laughs> imported from this ideology. But they had their hair shaved. And this is, of course, a sign of immortality. That's all possible for the book. So this shame and the stigma was there. We power also an island uh, almost close to Papua. Uh, an extremely rich chapter, very detailed, beautiful description. This chapter uh, in this book of what is the picture of what was going on there. And what is striking about Amor is the sexual violence that the women uh, 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 experience. There was similar, it's very strong in this place, it was uh, all over the uh, East Indies at the time, which it meant that they could be brought to alleviate over 54. As I said, the membership list is the exact list. Um, at this end time, TBI guard was coordinated by the military. The military always tries to say that it is a horizontal conflict, but the horizontal conflict, whatever there was, what happens in Korea and Asia, came into action. The motors by the military, it was definitely not just a more horizontal conflict, it was definitely uh, a vertical conflict. And this book lists and details at least five execution sites on this tiny island of Arnold where up to 200 of these sites, uh, people were murdered. Again, for victory teachers, civil servants, and also evangelists. The whole intellectual progressive age of the island disappeared. Family members were targeted as well. Detained, again, also their heads were shaved, and they had to report to the police regularly, as happens all over Indonesia. But in this case, also, they were forced to walk a long distance to the day because it was in their misery. During that period in detention, and there's a beautiful story in the book, the women and other prisoners were tortured and had to undergo forced labor. Many women, almost all of them, they say, were raped, and some became pregnant because of the rape. They were considered as rubbish, and they are still considered as rubbish, and kicked out of their families, networks, their family networks destroyed. They lost everything. Their husbands, their self-esteem, their economic assets. Yet the women fought for their children to survive and to regain their self esteem. And this book is a testimony to the struggle of self esteem. Okay, good afternoon. It is so wonderful to meet all of you. Thank you to the Heart Foundation for the invitation uh, to attend this event and giving me the opportunity to stand here to greet you. Uh, my name is Dina. I'm from uh, Jepit, a Eastern Indonesian Women Network for the Study of Women. Uh, Jepit is a network of more than uh, 40 women of different faiths and religion is Eastern Indonesia. At a meeting for each member, uh, Jepit identified several programs to guide its research, including women, spirituality, women, and culture. Disaster and women, resilience, discrimination towards women, through religion, doctrine, and structure, and state responsibility to protect women, including incident and violence against women. 
On the menu research topic, topic uh, identified, priority was given to research on women experience signs many of women serve favor are so old. The big research on this topic reserved in the book Memory Memory Terlarang. They have a foundation that translate this book as Forbidden Memories. Thank you for translator Jennifer. Thank you very much. Uh, I was one of the researchers and writer of the book Forbidden Memories. I was coordinator of the team that conducted research in Central South Central Timor. Uh, the effort to learn this tragedy was not easy. The effort to revisit this particular past was very difficult and also risky. A forbidden memory in the history of our nation, actually all components of the nation, Separate in impact, incident, whether as victims, family member of victim, perpetrator, and member of their families, or people who were fired by false account of history. We tend to think that peace will come as long as we don't pry into the painful past. But it is presents us a position that keeps us from every being able to be at peace with ourselves as a nation. The process of healing from collective trauma will only happen if our nation has the courage to speak courageously and honestly about what happened. Through this book and through my presence with you here, we in Japan bring the voices of women victims and self favor to challenge what men claim are still forbidden memories. We must dig up the grave of historical violence as a part of Indonesian history for the sake of a just and civilized future for our nation as a critic. The story of women victims and survivors are born from an understanding of themselves that God not destroyed by the violence directed toward them. Their stories are also born from a longing to make a significant contribution that can help to heal the life of both their church and their nation. Again, on behalf of the women who have now shared their story with you in English and my fellow GP research and colleagues, I extend warm greeting and thanks for helping to challenge continuing effort to keep their memories for life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my friend, uh, Elina, please. Come forward. Yeah. Yeah. Elina is the session uh, from Timor. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Elia. I'm. I was one of the researchers. I conducted uh, documentary research at the time, and now I'm taking my master of theological studies 
Lady Method Peters University. And uh, it relates to this research actually, because <clears throat> I'm trying to uh, work on how to encourage people to do reconciliation. So uh, when we uh, try to ask the government, the president, to say, uh, to say sorry or apologize for the victims, I'm myself, I'm trying to uh, work on the relation between people, among the people uh, which are the survivors and also uh, the executors at the time. So I would like to, how to say, uh, from the church to encourage Christians because you know, at the time when we uh, try, conducted the research, the survivors, they only want to talk, to tell the story because of uh, the researchers are uh, the pastors. So the role of the church is very significant. That's why I'm doing it from the church and my thesis will talk much about this from how Christian doctrine can encourage the people to be reconciled. And the church is the, reconciled, the communion of reconciled people and also the communion who will, that will reconcile and to do uh, conflict resolution. Thank you so much. Sorry, because <laughs> I don't know. I was talking. <laughs> Uh, so, I'm going to now, Jin has to step forward and just do some technical things. <laughs> Again, where would we be without him? Where do we put it? I would just also add that it is so great to have Sissy here. <coughs> sorry. To have Jenny, I'm so sorry. Jenny here. Um, Jenny has translated all three books and she would say this is the most challenging book I can do. Um, this, was, this was a difficult one, not just no, no, for the language, but for the content. Um, oh, I guess that, you know, quite a harrowing part, but I encourage you to read it because it is translated beautifully. Okay. We just use this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you happy to launch straight in? Yeah, sure. You're going to uh, okay, um, we, we have, Gemma, you must set a time for us. All right. Because we can continue for hours. Only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you, you will keep the time? Okay, yeah, well, we'll try. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we actually make this PowerPoint together, so we'll just take turns in, uh, in, in speaking, and I think we should start. Huh? <laughs> okay, just, okay, yeah. Yeah, just I'm good. The um, this yeah, this, uh, yeah, I took this, uh, this picture from uh, Apple who followed the uh, uh, report of the National Commission on Human Rights in, in 2012. And then Apple Magazine uh, published a special edition on uh, Jagal, the time when uh, the act of killing also uh, spring. Uh, and and uh, this is also uh, uh, advantage us to uh, establish this International People's Tribunal on 1965. 
Yeah, the background is uh, because uh, domestic mechanism is uh, at the at the forward, and uh, we have all the uh, legal uh, mechanism like uh, uh, law number twenty six uh, two thousand, uh, and also we have ratified all the international convention. We have a special uh, chapter on human rights in, uh, in the Constitution. We have a law on uh, human rights, but the uh, interpretation of the law is uh, very, uh, very uh, weak. And uh, even the uh, government uh, do not have um, any uh, attention to do, uh, their accountability. And uh, yeah. So uh, we're using the momentum um, uh, created by National Human Rights uh, Report and also uh, the uh, opening of the international community by the screening of uh, the act of killing and later the look of uh, silence and uh, as I mentioned, temple uh, medicine, uh, two edition once on uh, Jagda, um, uh, yeah, and also on uh, Lekra, and uh, also the uh, Jokowi uh, platform. And uh, he promised to uh, uh, to um, uh, respond to the uh, human rights community demand to uh, solve the past of uh, human rights uh, violation. There are seven uh, cases, one of them is the uh, 1965 uh, uh, crimes against humanity. And uh, also in the meantime, uh, we uh, are all know that uh, uh, the aging process of the victim, uh, while uh, most of the perpetrator has uh, died, and I also have uh, uh, experience in involving in, in, in the International People's Tribunal on uh, Comfort uh, Women in Tokyo on, uh, in 2000. And then, um, yeah, in a meeting of the victim in the Hague, in the uh, Saskia house, when, uh, when uh, we managed to invite uh, Joshua uh, Oppenheimer when uh, Amnesty International uh, Nebula um, conducted a film festival uh, movie that matters. And uh, after we uh, uh, discussed about the uh, film uh, itself, and then they just, just were posted the pro provoking question. Yeah, um, I uh, did my part. Is, uh, the filmmaker, the documentary filmmaker, and also the researcher, and now it's uh, your part. Um, and then uh, uh, almost 50 uh, participants at the time was, was silent, and suddenly uh, Sunny, uh, one of the commissioners who uh, made uh, the human rights commission uh, report, uh, pointed out uh, at me. <laughs> that uh, I must take the responsibility to uh, do uh, international advocacy because I have uh, uh, experience. That's, uh, that's, yeah. that's the background. Uh, and so this is just a picture of one of the old survivors who has already passed away and others waiting for... This doesn't work. Is it, it's not on? Oh, right, yeah. So, and here too, in the preparatory meetings, uh, survivors uh, waiting for justice, it's for them that this process is so also so vitally important. So, we set to work. Uh, we set up a foundation in Holland, which you need to have a legal entity, and we formulated objectives, culture of impunity, of course, the right to know the truth and their own history, voice to the victims, uh, which also is so clear and so important in uh, the presentation of the act of living just now. And of course we want to contribute to the healing process. And we also want to provide a public record of the crimes against humanity. And I think when we'll come to the last slides, 
in which we will discuss uh, 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 shortly the findings. Uh, this is for the first time that there is an international condemnation of Indonesia at this kind of level. And of course to open up a space for public debate. Um, and then as an extra issue um, is also that um, and which had never been looked into systematically, at least not from the point of view of a violation of their rights, uh, is the, uh, the exiles, the fate of the exiles, many of whom had their passports revoked, thousands of them, of, of hundreds, we don't even know how many members, but it must have been thousands at the time, who refused to support uh, the new order. Um, so we also wanted international recognition because so far it has so much been seen as an international, uh, as national Indonesian issue and of course particularly um, in the wake of what happened in uh, East Timor and what's happening again in Papua to prevent the reoccurrence. If a nation doesn't learn from its past mistakes, it can conduct them again. And of course, the ultimate the idea to affirm the uncompromising hope that justice is possible and that there will be no repetition. Evidence and complicity of the, of the Western states. Um, and of course, to contribute to the creation of political climate and to stimulate sustained international attention. We will talk about that later when we talk about the results. The procedures that you can do. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the International People's Tribunal in 1965 derived its power from the voices of uh, victims and of national and international civil uh, societies, uh, in, uh, including uh, searchers, journalists, artists, um, students, uh, and um, and uh, the IPT 1965 uh, has the format of a formal human rights court, but it is not a criminal uh, court in the sense that individual persons are indicted. Yeah, we have no uh, uh, power to do uh, it, it's only a uh, state can uh, do that. The prosecutor will indict the state of uh, Indonesia based on the proof presented of uh, responsibility for the widespread and systematic crimes against humanity committed after the event of 1965. The proof presented consists of document, visual material, statement of witnesses, and other recognized. Uh, uh, material. material. Yeah, and the power of the tribunal is to examine the evidence, develop an accurate historical uh, and scientific report, and apply principle of international law to the fact as found. The judges produce the verdict based on the material presented and call upon the government of Indonesia to realize that so far they have failed to take legal and moral responsibility for the victim. This verdict can also be used as a basis for a UN resolution on these crimes. Yeah, I'm proud to tell you that the main actor of this IPT is 10 women. Of course, we have uh, many men, but this uh, main actor this uh, Artic uh, Ultra. Um, uh, she is a former uh, project officer of the force, Anak Offenbeek is from Indigenity Wars, Dolorosa Sinaga, an artist, Lea Pamunkas, a journalist, myself, Ratna Sotari, a lecturer from uh, Leiden uh, University, uh, Saskia. Helen uh, van uh, Klinker, Sri Tun Rua, uh, she is also uh, exiled, and Sri Lestari Wagner uh, Nigrum, researchers from uh, Aja. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so, what did we do? Well, actually, Noor and I split. Um, most unfortunately, I must say, I'm happy that we're here together again, finally, after the tribunal. Because uh, Noor had to build up 
uh, platform in Indonesia, and that was not easy. Um, uh, pro uh, approaching uh, the various human rights organizations, not all of whom, of course, are uh, um, uh, on the same uh, line of activities, approaching the various victims' organizations, approaching uh, civil society, approaching politicians, approaching religious leaders. Uh, that was a very hard uh, face uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the whole setup of, uh, of, this, uh, of this tribunal. Not always easy, there was a lot of resistance. Um, I'm happy to report that many of those who were hesitant at first now are very happy and proclaim themselves to be members of IPT to our surprise sometimes, but that's great, that's wonderful, that everybody be a member of IPT. Uh, um, and while I was uh, mainly working in Holland at the time, trying to uh, coordinate the research process, because at first we had hoped that we would be able to use the report of the Komnasham, but that was still, it still is under embargo, so we could not use it. Um, so immediately I realized, and we found that out, that we were not be allowed to use that support as the basis for our, for our tribunal, that we had to do it ourselves. Um, and so I wrote to whoever I knew, and some of, uh, some of the researchers are in this room. Uh, uh, the, there's, uh, well, of course, uh, the NTT team, Gemma was there. Uh, Kate, of course, uh, Jess, uh, many others, Vanessa, um, but yeah, so many, many simply, we, we, because we approached, because some people wrote back and said, oh, but I've already written a book. Yeah, but you can't produce, a, write, a kind of build a, a tribunal on a, a pile of books, right? You must prepare the material for the judges. So in the end, we had a team of 40 researchers, as you already said, from all over the world, Indonesia, of course, quite a few activists also, many from uh, Australia. Uh, to my great uh, pleasure, there's a great bunch of uh, younger researchers here who are doing excellent work, uh, from uh, the Netherlands a few, from the United States a few, and together we managed to produce uh, an impressive body of evidence 1,500 pages, or I think, well, it's in different formats, so it's difficult to count, but it's, it's enormous, and it was really impressive. And later when we talk about the tribunal itself, I will, I will talk to you about, tell you about uh, one of, for me, the most uh, moving moments, uh, because I, I, I kept being nervous. Is this sufficient? Is this enough? Will this convince the judges, right? We were working, all of us, like mad for a year and a half. So uh, that's why uh, we are also tired. Uh, collecting material, and of course, it, at the same time, we had to build a, a website and go into all the social media things, like Le Lea did that. We had a media team in Indonesia and a media team in Holland who built a website. Our webmasters were two hackers, former hackers, uh, which proved very handy. <laughs> Yes, because, I uh, no, don't laugh, it's very serious. We, we were, during the tribunal, those two hackers, our webmasters, turned, uh, our hackers turned webmasters, um, couldn't sleep for two nights, because we had 10,000 attacks per hour on our website. It was really attacked from all sides. Uh, servers from Ukraine, Serbia, uh, South Korea, United States, Indonesia, were constantly bombarding our website. So they had to, uh, all the time, to reinstall, rebuild, etc., etc. So you better have hackers if you've got problems. Anyway, so the website was still blocked at some stage in Indonesia, but they did a tremendous job. So what, what was good, is that, but we had no money. We worked virtually without money. We just had, finally were able to raise a little bit of money uh, just for the, uh, for the physical expenses, that, you know, renting the venue. Uh, prepare uh, and uh, the, 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 the tickets for the judges and, uh, and the victims and things and so on. So we could never say, there was never a strong organization. Uh, Noor and I could never say, you do this, you do that, you do that, or if not, you will be fired. So we had to work on a very wonderful kind of basis in which everybody was invited to do what is your strength, what can you contribute, what do we need, what can you do, and that came so wonderfully together during the tribunal. Everybody was running around doing their own thing, and, and it all ran, and, and all on a voluntary basis. Some were making bags, some were doing a Twitter, some were doing Facebook, 
Um, others, uh, well, were busy with the uh, with the evidence or the live streaming uh, and all that. Our fundraising was particularly unsuccessful. Uh, <laughs> that was a big problem, um, also of a political nature. Uh, I mean, our own government, my own government, the, uh, the Netherlands, is happy to help out in Rwanda and Cambodia and all other kinds of tribunals far from home. But for Indonesia, they had no support whatsoever. I was almost thrown out of the ministry. And other funders either said, ooh, uh, we can't help you because we have an office in Indonesia and we are afraid that office uh, will, uh, will, uh, will, 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 be, will be thrown out or something like that. Or, oh, fortunately, we have no office in Indonesia, so we can't help you. So, <laughs> <laughs> it was very difficult because, I mean, Indonesia is a huge, important and rich country and many people and countries profit from the country and nobody wants to, to burn their fingers on what we were trying uh, to do. So in the end, we got a lot of threats, and we had a security plan training that no one conducted. <laughs> you did! <laughs> yeah, uh, we worked uh, work with uh, Brigitte, the international one, and the international one, to conduct uh, training, uh, mostly for uh, the uh, potential witnesses and uh, also uh, uh, working with the uh, National Commission on uh, Violence Against Women, National Commission on Rights, and uh, victim and uh, <laughs> uh, witness uh, protection because they are. Uh, like uh, a company uh, program, uh, they are all uh, police, and uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, I think uh, we are uh, successful in the, that uh, training and plan because when we uh, uh, come back to Indonesia from Japan, the yeah, Alliance Anti Communist Indonesia. It is an anti communist alliance waiting uh, for us in the, uh, in the uh, Welcome. airport with a huge uh, uh, poster, a banner uh, saying, Welcome back uh, from Kiana Bansa. Welcome back from the traitor of the nation. Oh my God. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, three of, uh, of us heard that um, one of the black girls was Gorob PKI, Gorob PKI, which is a kill PKI, a kill PKI. It also happened in uh, Bukit Tinggi, where the uh, black man uh, also uh, tried a lot of mutilasi, mutilasi, mutilate them, like kill them. Yeah, um, we uh, also uh, recorded that um, uh, Alsam uh, uh, recorded that there are 27 events on 1965 face restriction in the past year. Uh, 17 film screening for forced dismissal of meeting of the victims, three intimidation, Three deportation and one magazine uh, report. And of course, you know, uh, as Neman Saskia uh, already uh, told you, that uh, on Ubud uh, Festival, and uh, even yesterday, uh, Dolorosa and her team conducted um, a reading of the Keluarga Nam Lima, Nam Lima family uh, was uh, banned, but they uh, keep uh, reading. And uh, here, to do a video uh, campaign, uh, art uh, performance, uh, media, social, t shirt, and so on. And uh, one of the uh, answer, Dolorosa. Uh, I don't know, sculpture there uh, in uh, Taman Ismail uh, Marzuki. The title is 
book of the murder. This, uh, yeah, this uh, just, um, yeah. And uh, uh, the indictment. Uh, the accused of uh, this tribunal is the state of Indonesia and uh, using uh, Arsiva uh, concept, article on responsibility of state for international wrongful act as uh, yeah, this is the General Assembly Resolution on 2001 and with a reference uh, to law number 26, 2000 and uh, room statute and other international law. So uh, the Indonesian uh, state uh, uh, who was indicted uh, one crimes against the humanity, that's your mass murder, enslavement, torture, sexual uh, violence, imprisonment, prostitution, yes, uh, and uh, also the complexity of uh, USA, England, and Australia. Okay, now we come to the tribunal. The hearings uh, itself, this is an artist's uh, impression. It was held in a, in a new church in The Hague, um, which came for some criticism, because it was supposed to be a Christian place, but actually it's a conference center for a long, long time. Uh, so here it was. So the judges were sitting under the uh, this big wooden structure, um, and then in front of them uh, the registrar, um, and then on the side the prosecutors. Uh, here is uh, one of the prosecutors, Silke Suczynski, reading uh, her statement. And here are some of the judges. Um, our chief judge was Zak Jakob, um, a friend of uh, Mandela. Uh, in former member retired of the uh, member of the uh, Constitutional Court in uh, South Africa, who actually told us on the very last day at our farewell dinner, Saskia, do you know why I'm, I'm, why I'm so interested in and why I accepted your invitation? Um, when I was a student, I was a member of the uh, prohibited uh, ANC uh, communist wing, uh, and we were all the time discussing what happened in Indonesia. We were so worried that this was the end of communism, and now I have the opportunity to find out, so I rushed through this tribunal. <laughs> so he came. <laughs> Fortunately, because he was a wonderful uh, chief judge, uh, very powerful, uh, very authoritative also. Here, uh, Noor is reading uh, the opening statement, um, and here the chief prosecutor, uh, Todum Munya Lubis, is reading the opening statement uh, of the prosecution. Um, it's powerful, all the, uh, all the indictments uh, were there. Now I'm just giving you some scenes from what happened. Um, unfortunately, um, the female witnesses all decided, also in face of the threats that we faced, uh, to uh, testify behind the screen. So uh, only the male uh, witnesses, um, most of the male witnesses, um, were able to testify um, more publicly. It's the shame, the stigma, the persecution against women is still felt much more strongly. So here are two other witnesses. Martin Alaida, a writer, uh, former journalist of Hanyan uh, Rakyat uh, testifying. Um, and here uh, we have our friend and colleague and dear collaborator Vijaya Herlamba, who just passed away last week. Uh, he uh, was, has been suffering of cancer for a very long time, but he really wanted to testify. And um, his work is on the post-New Order cultural propaganda. And he really, really, really wanted to do, his last thing was this. He yeah, has studied in, uh, in uh, uh, Queensland. Queensland. And he delayed his last camera, and he's gone now. Here's uh, Pat Marthono, who is both a uh, victim, he was detained on very unclear grounds and actually was about to be released when all of a sudden something happened and he was detained again and then he was became the driver of one of the pickup trucks that brought the prisoners to be executed and then he had to help drag them into the river. So he was both the victim and the witness and in a sense also a perpetrator. 
this by Asfi, Asfi Warman, uh, testifying about Buru. A beautiful testimony, so clear and so convincing that um, I embraced him uh, immediately afterwards. We fell in each other's arms, so, so to speak. Here is Bradley, Bradley Simpson, who gave such a clear and convincing testimony of the complicity of other states, particularly CIA, Australia, um, and the Great Britain, of course, uh, on the last day. Here's Leslie, I mean, some of you may know her, Leslie Dwyer testifying about the mass killings and the mass graves uh, uh, in Bali. Here I am trying to explain, I think here I'm explaining about the uh, categorization, uh, the, the way in which psychologists uh, classified um, uh, prisoners, A, B or C, and actually took the seat of uh, the judges, of course, and about all of them, quite some attention. And here is the moment when I felt so relieved I told you before that I was so nervous that our report would not uh, be convincing enough or would be seen as insufficient, uh, being a bunch of non-legal experts. I always, my, my mantra was, I'm just an ordinary anthropologist, how do I come into this legal process? But here, uh, Dianto Bagliari uh, from Komnas Ham, commissioner, uh, he was not allowed to come actually to attend. Komnas Ham uh, has been uh, much, has been turned uh, against uh, our IPT, whereas in the beginning they fought, firmly supported it. The majority now says, uh, no, we should not do it anymore. And uh, Dianto was not allowed to come, but he did come at his own expense. And he was called to the stand, uh, and he was asked uh, by the judges, uh, all this evidence that we've heard so far, uh, is it in line with your report? And he said, yes, absolutely. So then I knew that all of us researchers had done a great job. So that was beautiful. And the same for Mariana Aminule from uh, Komnas Prepoir, who also said, Sama, 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 it's exactly as we did in our report on violence against uh, women. And uh, now the hearings uh, were concluded. And uh, we were very emotional because, uh, well, Noor will tell, uh, tell about the uh, um, the concluding statement of the judges. Yeah. Um, the judges considered the prosecution of cruel and unspeakable mass murder of unjustifiable imprisonment and the subjection of many people in prison to inhumane and ruthless torture and to forced labor that were well have amounted to enslavement are well founded. They found it also been demonstrated that sexual violence, particularly against women, was systematic and routine, especially during the period of 1965-1967. Furthermore, that many political opponents uh, were prosecuted and exiled that many thousands of people who, according to propagandists and hit discourse, were taught not to, to support the Suharto dictatorship with sufficient fervor disappeared. All of this was justified and encouraged by propaganda aimed to establishing the false proposition that those opposed to the military regime were, by definition, grossly immoral and unspeakably depraved. I, I read to uh, uh, the, the big uh, character because I thought this is the first time that uh, that uh, uh, considered as immoral and unspeakably uh, uh, Gross, uh, yeah, uh, did gross human rights violation in public, international uh, public. Yeah, it was such, it was such an emotional moment, right? You talk, you, you talk about that, no? <laughs> no, you want to talk about it. Well, we were all crying actually. We were all crying, and it was, I mean. It was it was a difficult process, right? It was uh, three days. We had to do all of all of this work. Four days. Uh, four days. Uh, the judges were very stern, 
uh, would they actually come up with a, with a strong statement? Uh, because, I mean, some of them were really only used to very formal uh, juridical processes. And this is a moral tribunal, a political tribunal. Would the evidence stand up? Would really the Indonesian state uh, be uh, called to task? And yes, they were, they were, it was a totally convincing and beautiful statement. Uh, eh? Yeah, otherwise you'll cry again, right? Okay, so what, what are we going to do now, right? Um, what are we going to do now? Uh, first of all, are you this we had, Noor? This is the this is follow-up plans. Oh, there's still more, okay. Uh, so, well, and no doubt that serious violations occurred. And also, what is also important, because we had an enormous long discussion on is this a genocide or is this not a genocide. Um, I had prepared a long chapter on yes, this is a genocide, uh, with using all the material from Argentine and whatever, right? Um, others thought that, well, the arguments may not be convincing. Uh, in the end, the prosecutors decided not to go for genocide, so it's not in the, uh, in the indictment itself. Uh, because it was seen to be too sensitive an issue for this moment in Indonesia. So the prosecutors decided to withdraw, do not to do it. In, uh, at first they said yes, and then they said no, it's too dangerous because of the, also the mounting pressure. But here, in this statement, um, the judges actually uh, leave space for a reconsideration of the genocide claim. They say, the material presented may amount to proof that other grave crimes have been committed. So they're discussing it again. Uh, and, and, and if they find that, okay, it was not in the indictment, but we, yes, we as judges find this is a case of genocide, they can still say that. So they leave it open. So this sentence is important. Uh, and of course, also about the complicity. Yeah. But do we, do we, yeah, yeah. the responses, well, oh yeah, well, we've had many uh, responses. Um, we have had threats, as Noor already said, uh, at the airport, uh, hello, betrayers of the nation. Noor has been several times, two times in uh, national TV shows being shouted at. Uh, we are all called enemies of the state. Um, so there is a lot of pressure on us. And what does the Ministry of Defense Yeah, the Ministry of Defense says the enemies of the state, and so what happens then is that the, uh, the militias uh, take this as their clue to come into action, right? Because the militias are, of course, motored uh, by the army to do the dirty work of the army. And so, uh, at present, at this moment, uh, uh, there is a letter from the Bermuda Panchasila, their legal division, uh, that Noor and Tor Mulia Lubis and Uli have to issue a formal uh, apology to the Indonesian people for betraying the nation, right? And sending interning newspapers, um, this is summons, and so this, this is going to be a big process. And also telling us that we are responsible for the, all the unrest that will follow from this, uh, and that they, Pamuda Panchasila, can't be held to account if anything happens. So these are threats. Um, these are, this is a difficulty, and the, the, uh, the, it shows the, uh, the tense situation that uh, we face. But overall, we can say that the uh, young generation in uh, Indonesia has responded enormously positively. We uh, have been um, conducting the live streaming, and there have been many so-called no bar, non ton bar, uh, uh, looking, uh, watching together with discussion leaders, and some of these we have been able to facilitate with discussion leaders and moderators. Yes, and uh, there been enormous response on social media, also Twitter, Facebook, whatever, all these kinds of things. There be hundreds of articles in the, in the media, in Indonesian media, in the in Australian press also, Dutch press also some, but particularly in Indonesian media, where of course it it, uh, it is, is supposed to be. Um, there have been debates all over the country, uh, particularly in universities, of course, which are the, uh, the, of course, the spearheading the progressive movements. And one of the issues that is playing out now is that the UGM, the Gajamari University in Yogyakarta, is called upon to reflect on its role in 65. And this is a direct consequence of uh, 
of what happened at the IBD was one of the women that you also saw just now uh, in the, from Yogyakarta. She was also testifying to us. She has uh, experienced terrible forms of sexual torture. Um, and in one of the most gripping moments uh, in the tribunal, she says, there I speak the name of the, my most cruel torturer. And the judge says, yes, Boop, speak the name. And she said? Lukman Sutrisno. Lukman Sutrisno, a very well-regarded scholar from UGM. Nobody knew that he had been such a cruel torturer. And he's, he's already passed away. But that also sparked an enormous debate what happened at universities. And uh, around this time also, uh, Us, uh, was Usman Wahid, what's his name exactly? Wahid. Abdul Wahid. Abdul, Abdul Wahid, sorry. Abdul Wahid has done a research on uh, the involvement of universities uh, uh, in 65. And so there are all these debates now. And uh, tomorrow I will also give a, we will give a talk on what uh, the psychologist contributed to this whole process at the University of Indonesia. And all those kinds of things. So the, a process of reflection, not only of the ones who actually murdered, but also this, this whole hundreds of thousands, maybe, of people who also were involved in a more or less degree, right? Because, I mean, there were many who, uh, well, they didn't kill, but they condoned, uh, uh, they accepted the land, the houses, the assets of the people, they profited in their careers, uh, in their political work, or whatever, or they, uh, or they contributed in many ways, and particularly universities, of course, are, are, are working on that now. So, our follow-up plans, maybe you can continue now? Oh, okay. This is um, the uh, follow-up uh, plan that uh, we uh, formulated. Yes, uh, yeah, and uh, we uh, will do international advocacy, particularly toward the UN human rights bodies, to increase the international attention to the crimes against humanity committed in Indonesia after 1965. This, of course, will be conducted uh, after the final judgment in uh, Genève on 11 of March and uh, to commemorate 50 years of Super Smart. Uh, second, uh, advocacy in Indonesia was the, the most important one to stimulate the development of political, legal, and socio-cultural process to deal with the crimes against humanity. And uh, third, coordination of a media campaign on the crimes against humanity uh, in order to help create a climate in which the victim and their family can be rehabilitated and possibly can receive preparation and reconciliation in the country uh, can be achieved. And for preparation of educational material for various target groups, especially youth, students, on the event of 1965 and their aftermath, as knowledge of this period is still dominated by army propaganda. Thank you. This was it. <laughs> good, 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 good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for your explanation, uh, Ibubo and Katia. My name is Siti. I'm from Kajamada University. <laughs> uh, and uh, yes, I appreciate what uh, you have done. But uh, please carry on with the other two massacres. Two other uh, massacres happened uh, more recent than 1965. That is uh, Tanjung Priok uh, accident sorry, sorry. In, uh, in, 19, in 
1983 and uh, Lampung accident in 1981 uh, when uh, a lot of uh, religious uh, leaders, I mean Muslim religious leaders were killed by uh, Suharto regime. And then uh, second, uh, I would like to uh, to ask you a question about the evidence of human suppression. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm very nervous here because I I I know him, I know him, and we were so close. And I uh, I just realized that he was involved in that some kind of a cruel uh, cruel activities and make me sad, you know. And at, at the moment, I also close to his wife as well. And they are so kind. I never, I never realized that Pak Lukman uh, was involved in that uh, accident. So please give me uh, evidence that uh, make me sure, make me confident that he was involved in that uh, accident. Thank you very much. Um, well, about the other two massacres, um, we are not the Kongas Ham. Uh, so I hope that the Kondas Ham will take this up, right? Or otherwise... So, so just put uh, this one into yeah. your agenda, right? So to make your uh, explanation be uh, more justice, right? Just not when uh, one cited, right? When uh, I, I feel that when Muslim as a as a victim, nobody cares. Because, yeah. I don't, I don't because, think so. Uh, because think when... when uh, yeah. Uh, you know that that uh, 1983 Tanjung Priok event is uh, is all about the Muslim and yes. the Tanjung Priok oh, and no. also the yes. Tanjung Priok. Yes, just, uh, just explore that. Yeah. Okay. So just say that. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, a lot of things happening. Yes. Okay. But, but let, me add, let me add. Let me let me add. I mean, uh, so Noor has been dealing with this issue for a long time already. But let me add just to show you why it is important to uh, to do this 65 work so carefully. Uh, what happened in Tanjung Priok was, amongst others, a classification again of prisoners according to their, in this case, their Muslim virginity, right? And the test for the Muslim virginity was developed out of the test for the communist virginity that was used in the psychological testing. So the 65 case, you can say, is the origin of many of the post Suharto, or at least post-65, crimes against humanity. East Timor used exactly the same kind of torture techniques. Uh, the military used exactly the same kind of more, more murder and torture techniques as in 65. The Tanjung Priyo case, the same kind of classification uh, of, of prisoners and murder of prisoners on the basis of the psychological testing. What's happening now in Papua, along similar lines. What we try to do is to break this cycle of impunity and violence in the hope that Indonesia will come out a cleaner, a more reflective red nation that respects human rights. And that's why it's so important, because the origin is in 65, to focus on that, at least for the moment. Uh, but of course, you're, you're right, the other cases are very important too. Now, what look one through Sutrisno. Um, we, of course, were also as surprised as you are uh, about um, our witness saying this. We, n none of us had expected this. But UGM has a record, right? I, I myself don't know exactly about uh, Lukman Sutrisno's uh, personal involvement. Uh, but, the, uh, but the interesting thing is that we also brought that before the judges. There is a kind of certificate from Sarwal Eddy, who, as you know, is the main killer, right? Thanking UGM for their support in his campaign of killing. And that was proudly displayed until quite recently. We took a photograph of that and we brought it to the judges in the hall of UGM. And what UGM was known for was for its own uh, uh, its own business in purging its own staff members and students. Um, there is an article on that in the Prisma, sorry, the Tempo issue uh, of uh, of the first week of November, which which, de which deals with the complicity of other states. So it's the third issue of Tempo on 65. 
and there's an article in which there's a long piece on UPM, how the military wasn't even involved with UPM because UPM director did it himself so efficiently, cleaning out, purging out all the progressive lecturers, cleaning out, killing, purging all the leftist progressive students. So UPM has really a lot of things to reflect on. And we hope that that, 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 will, uh, that, that will, of course, be, uh, continue, and that then also the role of Rukman Sutrisma will become clearer. Now, um, yeah, I heard about the role of Rukman Sutrisma in the 80s, actually, when um, one of my staff in uh, Aldeha Jakarta um, uh, who uh, told me uh, about uh, him. Um, uh, Aldeha actually uh, quite close with uh, Rukman uh, Sutrisno because he uh, was uh, also uh, very uh, critical to, to uh, Suharto uh, as well. But once, uh, one day, we uh, discussed about the uh, there being a culture uh, of peace in Aldeha where Rukman uh, Sutrisno was there and uh, he uh, really uh, passionate uh, to, uh, to that uh, program and uh, my uh, staff who are uh, guru uh, this month and also from uh, UGM heard about uh, his uh, speech and and uh, he just uh, uh, quickly, quickly, uh, and then he, uh, he uh, looked much uh, across uh, him and uh, will be like this day in Jaramidi today, Jaramidi today, with uh, Allah, you are the uh, uh, most uh, cruel uh, investigator. Uh, yes, um, another uh, evidence. And then, um, um, in, uh, I think, 15 uh, November, or oh, 16 uh, November, I was uh, interviewed by Nambal uh, Khan, uh, and also the uh, Sujarawan, a uh, historian from OPM, Papa Uriawan, also uh, uh, told the, the uh, listener that uh, in the 80s, everybody uh, talked about this. Very busy, busy. Uh, only, you know, whisper. Nobody uh, dared to uh, speak up about uh, uh, this. And now, only now, the victim uh, uh, managed to uh, stick it into the national public. Quite a party. We have more questions or comments. Thank you. Um, I don't know where to start, but I, I decided to be. I have mixed feelings about everything, of course, that made the reason. But uh, we are still here, it's tomorrow. So I decided to be positive. Um, and I'm going to start with this. I'm going to hope to appeal every single Indonesian, yeah? not to see um, this as an attack. This should be an opportunity for all of us yeah? um, to, uh, I can list all the, the folks if you like. Uh, to start probably a new life to be a better Indonesia where all of us with the support of historian, researcher, anthropologists together in need to find the information to be willing to learn, to read, to ask questions all the folks, yeah, and we all know that I was born in Suharto, Hira, okay. Uh, to be frank, growing up in different kind of 
uh, I can't describe it. It's that animal of, um, do we know everything about our history? Yeah? There were lots of questions about that. Yeah? The books at school, the teacher, some sadness in our own family, the films that were made officially. So many things that if we as an Indonesian we can think and feel and sometimes witness the members of our family cry, they become mad, they suffer from mental, mental illness. You hear the story, you actually know that some members of your family disappear without any reason. So many questions that we can ask. That means we have to start finding the answer. And the answer is not getting angry and behaving like that some of us think that there's this monster of A, monsters of B, monsters of C. That means we were divided, but we, did, we don't know. Yeah? So I suppose I'm a bit all over the place, but my hope is this that let's use this opportunity to uh, start learning to read, to think, to ask questions, not to attack, not to feel defensive. Be smart about it. Smart in a very sensitive, brave way if you like. Yeah? Uh, and I'm going to, I have started with myself. I'm going to start with myself. Yeah? Why are they three different persons of books. Why some books were banned? If we use our feelings, our, I don't know what you call this, if you believe in God, you given brain, idea to think, you have to ask that questions. Yeah? Not so questions. So instead of feeling like um, you, you attack me, or I'm attacking you, or you belong to that group. It should be, this should be, should see a little hope that this is a hope. Let's talk about this. Let's be informed. Uh, so that's, that's just a, a little thing that I'd like to, to say. And I'm one of the um, uh, Indonesians. I'm a daughter of Indonesian history. I was somewhere there in my life. And I believe in 1965. But it happened. It exists. I wanted to know a lot more. Not to get angry. We channel the anger problem to find out and why, why did it happen. Uh, and then perhaps to learn to, to stop, not to happen again. So how about that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's why we do this. Yeah. 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 Any other? Okay. Um, um, my name is Ray Takir. I'm an Indonesian. I'm Filipino. Uh, by birth, but I'm already in Australia. Um, look, I just would like to. Uh, uh, congratulate the uh, the IPT for setting up this uh, this tribunal to um, put a particular state in the heart for the uh, crime that they have done against the Indonesian people. Um, and uh, I would like also to reassure you uh, that uh, this tribunal is. Um, setting a good example in Asia and in Southeast Asia in uh, taking all these uh, um, uh, this steps in Asia and Southeast Asia into account that uh, they cannot just uh, you know, run Russia with impunity in their uh, violation of uh, people's rights. Thank you. I will be on. My name is Suti Gunawan. Um, in 
the film, the actor King, the, uh, what was his name, Daga, said that oh, when he was asked, oh, I can't remember her name, <laughs> and he was asked whether, uh, what would he do or whether he mind if he is taken to the uh, International Court? He said, okay, if you do it, then I'll, I'll, I'll face it. Now, is that the, is the International Court the same as the ITP? No. And whether the ITP also looked at the crimes that were committed in North Sumatra in 65? Uh, well, the, the second question is easy to answer. Yes, we had pa Astana Asibuan testify. And there's lots of uh, work on uh, North uh, Sumatra, of course, and some other chapters in the report are on that. Um, the IPT is a people's tribunal. It's a moral and political tribunal. It's not a criminal court. Uh, why not? Uh, first of all, because the ICC is a huge institution uh, with millions of dollars, and we have only tiny money. But, but, but that's uh, a minor issue. But of course, the important issue is, is that the ICC only works uh, when states bring a case to the court, and they can ne never work retroactively. So, and, and then, of course, Indonesia has never ratified the ICC. So it is a total, um, at this moment, a process that uh, can't deal with these kinds of issues. Uh, and Noor knows probably uh, the legal terms better under which this works. But I mean, it's the Rome Statute that was. Uh, so actually, what is important is is that the Rome Indonesia has adopted the the articles of the Rome Statute, which is the founding statute of the International Criminal Court, into its 2000 law on human rights law. No, am I correct? Human no, rights court law, right? I always say that after this whole process is over, I can take my bar exam. But it's, <laughs> but it's still a bit more complicated. Um, so we take Indonesia to court on on the basis on the legal arguments of its own laws, which are modeled after the Rome Statute, which is the founding statute of the International Criminal Court. But Indonesia, as a state, will never bring the case, uh, 65 case, to the court, and it can never bring, it will never do it because it hasn't been ratified yet, and, uh, and it's, uh, in, it's huh? and it cannot act retroactively, right? So it cannot bring a case to court before it has ratified it, and before even the ICC was set up. So this is a total no-go, this road. So these are two totally different processes. So ours is not a legal procedure. This was also in the Indonesian press very much played up. These people are dragging our generals today to be tried at the international court. Uh, this is not the case. It can't, it's totally impossible for that to happen. And in fact, Indonesia must do that. So um, I would say there's a clear enough case. I mean, if you look at the film Jagal, I mean, the murderers very clearly say, yes, I've murdered maybe a thousand people. Well, what more of a confession would you need? But the Indonesian state does not uh, does not perpetrate, uh, does not sorry uh, persecute uh, a, a person even like that. Let alone that, uh, and these are only the, the minor people, the actual butchers, but the masterminds uh, are totally. Uh, well, I would say uh, we said it also in another film. The military caste is still in power. And they are not going to uh, to try uh, each other and themselves. They're not going to do that for the moment. Yeah, as Saskia <coughs> uh, uh, explained, we had the principal, the two uh, human rights incarnation. Uh, <coughs> Uh, is adopted in the law uh, number 26 uh, version. And um, uh, actually, after a pharmacy for adopting a transitional uh, justice, we managed to have the uh, special chapter on the Constitution on human rights, uh, law on human rights, uh, law on uh, human rights uh, court and also on uh, truth uh, and reconciliation. But in 2006, 
the law on absolute uh, reconciliation was announced by a uh, constitution, uh, constitutional court. And um, for the past human rights uh, violation, there is a special uh, uh, article in the human rights uh, court that uh, Ms. Hahn had to uh, research the, uh, the human rights uh, violation and uh, had offered to uh, attorney uh, general and the uh, attorney uh, general will uh, uh, pass to the Commission uh, 3 on law and human rights in the parliament and then the parliament will recommend it, uh, will recommend to the president to set up an uh, ad hoc human rights court. So far, for all the human rights uh, violations, past human rights violations, only one uh, case uh, uh, succeeded uh, to get the recommendation from uh, parliament. That's about the uh, disappeared uh, uh, person. And that's uh, up to now, 10 years. Okay. Uh, 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 yeah, nothing happened. I was in the parliament in the commission three when uh, we discussed about that uh, in our tradition on uh, disappearance and we managed to uh, launch the recommendation for the president and but uh, after that, uh, nothing happened. Is there a final short so, question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so if the national mechanism uh, <coughs> is uh, uh, Exhausted, so we could uh, lobby the uh, UN uh, mechanism, um, so, so, so like uh, set up a uh, tribunal uh, for former uh, Yugoslavia or Rwanda, for example. But this uh, the, 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 the law, the law process. But we have to do it. So, yeah, a final short question from Vanessa. Oh, you've got a loud voice, but um, <laughs> thanks, thanks both of you for your very comprehensive report today. So my question is: you outlined as a, a plan for what to do next. Uh, what do you think your most immediate uh, plans would be to do, and what are your um, most what do you think are your most important demands about what to do from here on? And who should we be placed towards? Now we are preparing a petition to uh, President Jokowi to uh, fulfill his uh, promise uh, yeah, to uh, settle all the past human rights violations and especially. Um, uh, 1965 crimes against humanity, uh, not only this uh, on the IPP uh, judgment, but uh, 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 primarily based on the uh, National Commission on Human Rights uh, Report, which is a procedure's uh, one. And second, I thought the important one is the, to prepare the educational uh, uh, material for young uh, people and also uh, to make like a series of workshop to the uh, teacher, historian, uh, yeah, uh, historian and, and uh, people in, in general. That's uh, yes, uh, <laughs> And then the report has to be written. And then two books have to be prepared, and then we, uh, yes, two books, all, yeah, here's the professor speaking. Um, so that's, that's all kind of academic work. Um, we have to, of course, prepare the uh, final statement from the judges. We have to lobby at the UN level, um, and uh, in general, keep going. Thank you.
And I'm gonna just have one last uh, remark. On, on, I'm actually a victim, and your presentation today and your courage, your efforts in achieving this so far, obviously made us very happy. And I think I can speak on behalf of billions of victims in Indonesia of the 65 uh, to thank you for all these efforts. And for the Thank you. 